Joining us now from Louisville is Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Sir, thank you for being here today. Good morning. So the first nine months of the year did not produce the legislative wins the president expected. With the passage of the budget bill and now on to tax reform, do you get a sense that Republicans can sort of taste victory? Well, tax reform is important. Uh, 31 years ago today, Ronald Reagan signed uh, a comprehensive tax reform. Uh, we intend to accomplish that uh, between now and the end of the year. But, you know, the suggestion that the president hasn't been able to uh, change a lot of things is simply not true. We have the Supreme Court with Neil Gorsuch, other uh, court nominations coming through, new people in the agencies who are dealing with a regulatory rampage of the last uh, eight years. Mm. Uh, the president's making a lot of changes, and the Senate, since it's in the personnel business, is uh, helping the president accomplish these changes. Uh, but we intend to, uh, to, to achieve tax reform as well. So health care was hard. Tax reform apparently sounds like it's supposed to be easier. For, uh, I don't exactly know how that is, but I could see that the path, especially at 51 votes, makes sense. But as I don't know if you heard, Mick Mulvaney was talking about this possibility that there might be a compromise where an additional tax bracket would be added, maybe a so-called millionaire's tax. Is that something that you could support? You know, uh, Dana, I hate to get into the details of this. Uh, it's going to be hashed out in the open in the Ways and Means Committee in the House and the Finance Committee in the Senate. I can tell you what the overall goal is, middle class tax relief, the stopping of job exportation because of our horrible business tax structure in this country, uh, to get the country growing again. That coupled with the regulatory changes the president's already implementing, we think give us a chance to achieve at least 3% growth. Uh, there wasn't a single year of 3% growth during the Obama years. That's what we need to get the country growing and going again. The details of it, such as the one you mentioned, uh, are all gonna be hashed out in the committees in open process and then we'll take the bills up on the floor and see what they look like at that point okay um moving on there's alabama senate hopeful roy moore uh the super PAC that you allied with spent millions to boost incumbent luther strange but if moore is elected on december 12th he could be a really key vote on tax reform so your friend uh, steve bannon uh, he was a major backer of moore has made no secret that you are his enemy number one and that you are the roadblock to the president getting his agenda accomplished listen this revolt is going from Alabama to Arizona. The last couple of days, Mitch has been saying this big thing. Hey, you got to win. You know, uh, winners make policy, losers go home. Hey, Mitch, note to self, Mitch, Big Luther Strange and little Bobby Corker are both going home. These people, Mitch, it's two to O. Oh. And even the president didn't really dispute Bannon's frustration with the Senate Republicans myself i'll be honest they are not getting the job done and i can understand where steve bannon's coming from because i'm not happy about it and a lot of people aren't happy about it so uh, senator mcconnell is tax reform a must pass and if you get that legislative success is it the antidote to steve bannon's agitation against you well let me just say with regard to the element you were referring to here they've been out there for a number of years they cost us five senate seats in 2010 and 2012 we would have gotten the majority sooner uh, but for the fact that they were able to nominate people who could not win in November. In 14, they were defeated everywhere. In 16, they were defeated everywhere. And the difference is we've been in the majority in 2014 and 2016, two Congresses in a row. Look, this is not about personalities. This is about achievement. And in order to make policy, you have to actually win the election. The kind of people that are supported by the uh, element that you've just been referring to uh, are specialists in defeating Republican candidates in November. And that's what this inter-party skirmish is about. Our goal is to nominate people in the primaries next year who can actually win, and the people who win will be the ones who enact the president's agenda. So you, were, you mentioned that in the Rose Garden. You talked to the president about those uh, four individuals that you just could rattle off the top of your head. But I was curious about two conservatives that are now actually very good allies of yours who you didn't initially support in the primaries. That would be, for example, Marco Rubio and Pat Toomey. So could it be that there are some good GOP senators that can emerge from primaries that you maybe wouldn't anticipate? Actually, I supported both of those uh, senators. Many times we're on the same side. Uh, but the point is, to make policy, you've got to win elections. And some of these folks that you've been uh, quoting 
as I said, are specialists in nominating people who lose. So that isn't going to help President Trump uh, achieve his agenda. He needs a Republican Senate and a Republican House to confirm judges and to pass legislation that are important to him and to the country. And that's what this is really all about, trying to change America from the Obama years and take it in a different direction. Um, you, you talked about uh, the judges, and I know you, you must have spoken about that with the president because he talked about it in your uh, press conference with him in the Rose Garden. Um, on Tuesday, the president's coming to have lunch with you and your members. Uh, and apparently they're frustrated, not necessarily with judges, but with the pace of confirmations of other nominees that the administration has put forward. And, uh, and Mick Mulvaney just said that the president is going to press the Senate on that. What do you think he'll say? Yeah, the Democrats have made it hard, but they can't stop them. I mean, ultimately, we're going to get all of these nominees. They've slowed the process down, which has been pretty exasperating. Uh, but they will not be able to win on any of these confirmations. We will confirm them all, both administration positions and uh, to the judiciary. Do you worry, sir, that your personal unpopularity with the Republicans out in the country is weighing down your possibility to make sure that you can keep the Senate next year? You look, I'm not going to be on the ballot in any of these states, and I don't think uh, the candidates who are running need to take a position on me. The people in those states are interested in what the candidates can do for them and for the country. Uh, trying to cook up an issue like this that's irrelevant is only going to create uh, divisions and make it more difficult for us to win in November. But I don't expect any uh, a candidate in America uh, to uh, sort of sign up on how they may vote for the majority leader of the Senate uh, a year and a half from now. So a last question for you is on a different topic. There's a looming issue of a of possible regulation of the Silicon Valley giants, which have largely grown because of a lack of federal regulation and interference. Do you think that that could be about to change under President Trump and a Republican Congress? I don't know. I, I mean, I think all of these areas we need to take a look at, and uh, I think it's in the early stages of trying to figure out what the way forward is. All right, Senator McConnell, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Always good to speak with you. Okay, thank you. Right, up next, we will bring in our Sunday group to